starting to get melty out. Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Well, out in the garden today. What a difference it makes from year to year, you know? A lot of years now, I have hoops up on these beds, plastic or frost cloth covering them, and I'm able to start planting some of my cool weather crops or get some things seeded, you know, in the next few weeks here. Right now I'm at uh, right about the middle of March. And uh, when I walk out here, I'm sinking up to here, you know, halfway up, you know, almost to my knees in the garden here. I was hoping to get my cold frame. You might be able to see just the, the frame of it in the distance there. I was hoping to get the cover on it um, by this time of year. A little bit behind what I was hoping from the last few years that we've had. And uh, that's okay. We've had a lot of good snow this year and we needed that. And uh, it's coming, it's finally starting to thaw. And today looks like the last cool day and really it's not that cool out. Um, it's right around zero right now. Great snowball making weather. But uh, it was like minus 20 uh, just in the last week. So this is pretty nice right now for me. But we are supposed to be above freezing for days after this now. Um, the long range forecast is looking pretty good. We'll still be dropping uh, cold at night, but yeah, I think spring is finally starting to, to come along here. I, don't, I think we're past all the false springs and I think we're, we're getting there. It is still March. We quite often do get some snow around the end of March again, but if it starts to warm up like it's supposed to, that won't, won't be too big of a deal. So hopefully in the next week, I can get the cover on my uh, cold frame. Uh, I could start getting some hoops on these, or some, some covers on these hoops here. I have a few more hoops uh, that I could put out. This one happens to be on a, a frame. It's frozen down, so I can't show you, I guess, but the rest all require me being able to have access to some, some loops on the sides of my beds, my raised beds here, so I won't be able to get to those for a little while yet, I guess. But hopefully soon I'll be getting things ready outside. Um, but I just thought today would be a nice day to come out here, have a look around, check things out, and just talk about those average last frost dates. It seems like a lot of people get confused about it. it. It can be a little bit of a confusing concept because, you know, our last frost, it's not the same from year to year. Some years I'd be close to my average last frost, you know, in another month. Might have a few mild frosts after that, and this year, who knows? Our average last frost around here for years has been May 24th. I was just looking online recently trying to find some resources to help some of you that are trying to figure this out out. And I finally found an updated list for my area. Um, so I'll put some screenshots here of some sites that you could go to to find for Canada and the US. Uh, but it looks like my average last frost has moved up almost a week now sooner, which I'd suspected but when I was looking, you know, in the, the winter, I couldn't find that. So I went with what's been the average here for years. Um, but that's what you want to work with when you're looking at your seed packs, trying to figure out when to start seeds. It's that date that you want to work back from when it says, you know, on the seed pack, start six to eight weeks before your average last frost. You just count back those weeks. Um, for things that might take a little bit longer to grow, if you're familiar with that plant and how long it takes to grow from seed, uh, and you live especially in a cold climate, you probably want to go for the full length of time that they suggest or even an extra week long, uh, sooner than they suggest. For things that grow really fast, like tomatoes tend to grow really fast from seed, I usually go with the, you know, the uh, most tomatoes say six to eight weeks. I would usually go with six weeks 
before my average last frost. Um, so if you're not sure when to start your seeds, that's, that's a good uh, indication there to guess. And you know, if you're new to starting seeds, then I would go with what the package says. And uh, as you get to know and get to learn your climate better, then you'll know better, you know, if you can adjust those dates for you and how you grow things and what you do. Because, you know, whether you use extra protection and can get things out early, or whether your little microclimate where you are tends to have, you know, one last real cold spell right around that average last frost date will affect, you know, when you want to actually be putting things outside. So I don't know if that really clears anything up for anyone, but those average last frost dates are approaching if they haven't already come in your area. And it's exciting for me to be able to get out here, enjoy some time without a hat and a scarf and mitts and <laughs> all the gear on. It's great. So I'm excited and uh, looking forward to a whole new season starting outside. So hopefully you are too, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.